Hello, my name is Joyce Harper and I'm Professor at the Institute for Women's Health at University College London. And in this short video, I'd like to introduce you to Module 4 of the Distance Learning Certificate in Clinical Embryology. Alpesh Joshi and, I, and myself run the Embryology and PGD Academy and I've been running training courses since 1996 in various aspects of embryo biopsy and IVF. And Alpesh and I have have work, been working on the Certificate in Clinical Embryology, which we launched a few years ago. And we think this is really important platform for embryologists to learn about the theory of what they do in the IVF lab and beyond. So this is an introduction to module four, which is on quality design, quality assessment and troubleshooting. Just a quick revision for those who may not have taken the full certificate or may not know about it. It's an incredibly flexible distance learning program. Everything is done by distance learning. You don't travel to any country. We have eight modules which are delivered by global leaders. And you can take one, two, three modules, all take all eight. So you can take individual modules with or without exams. You can take the certificate where there's eight modules, the exams and an exit exam, which is also done online. Or the full certificate also includes a logbook, and I'll explain that in a moment. But to do this, you have to be a clinical embryologist working in an IVF lab. And the modules are accredited by the Royal College of Pathologists. So here's the eight modules. I think it's really important for students to understand the theory of what they're doing. And so we start at the laboratory, then we have a cryo module, a genetics module, and lab design, quality assessment and troubleshooting. And these four modules all have a logbook attached to them for those doing the full certificate. And then we go slightly out of the lab, but these things I think are really important. Clinical aspects of IVF, new technology and ethics of reproductive medicine, gametogenesis and pre-implantation development, and finally, reproductive health. So how the modules work is that for each lecture, there's a photo and bio of the speaker, a written summary of the talk, and a video of the talk with PowerPoint. That, that, that looks just like this. There are multiple choice questions for those taking the exam for your revision. And then I think feedback's really important. We need to know, did you find the lecture good or what, was there room for improvement? And for the module, what you do is you watch the talks in order. When the module is complete, you can do your online multiple choice exam, which is individually generated for each delegate. And we'll do regular catch up calls by Zoom. So to apply for the certificate or individual modules, visit the embryologycertificate.com, complete the relevant application form, and you can pay immediately by PayPal, which is the quickest way, or by Bankers Draft. The modules are open all the time throughout the year. You do this at your own pace. You can do your module, take a break. It's incredibly flexible. And if you have any inquiries, please visit ivf.pgd.academy at gmail.com. So let's introduce module four, lab design, quality assessment and troubleshooting. So this talk is the introduction to the module. And then we have Steve Harbottle talk about lab design and construction. Then Jason Swain is going to talk about laboratory communication, maintaining quality and consistency in an IVF lab network. Raga Mansour is going to talk about air quality in the IVF lab, especially VOCs. Alpesh Doshi is going to introduce the quality management system in the IVF lab. Bashak Balaban is going to talk about troubleshooting and quality assessment in embryo culture. Dean Moorbeck is going to talk about monitoring your performance and KPIs, which is essential for any embryologist. And of course, the king of auditing, uh, we have uh, Ronnie Janssen's going to talk about internal auditing on the IVF lab. So we have uh, had a, a Cairo consensus meeting a few years ago. Um, and uh, this was a really excellent event. You'll see the photo here. Many of the key speakers in your, this module were at that meeting. Um, and we had the Cairo consensus document on IVF laboratory environment and air quality report of the IVF of an expert meeting, which is published up in RBM online. And that obviously will, that paper go, goes hand in hand um, with this um, module. And in, um, 
April, May of 2020, during the lockdown, we've had a free webinar series. And at the beginning of May, um, the um, topic will be uh, quality assessment and troubleshooting and culture systems. So we will include that webinar. You will get a, a access to that uh, during this module as well. So the aims and learning objective, objectives of module four are to educate candidates on the basics of lab design and lab communication, to understand the importance of the lab environment, to understand the importance of quality management, and to understand which KPI should be measured and what should be audited. It's really important to consider our lab environment. We may have the best embryologists and the best consumables and all the best equipment in the lab, but the environment that the lab is sitting in is so important from what um, substances come up through our drains in our um, sinks in the lab to the air con that comes into the lab and what that's bringing in, but also the environment that the lab has been built on. What have the walls been painted with? What has the floor been painted with or covered in? When the cleaners come in, what are they cleaning the lab environment with? So all these factors are so important. You may have two identical labs in what you think in, in every way, same personnel, same equipment, in two different locations, and they will have very different lab environments. And all of the data is showing that this will definitely affect the quality of the embryos that we generate. So in this module, it's all of those things are going to be explained. It's really important for any embryologist to think about all these little things that could really affect the quality of the embryos and the success of the IVF lab. It's not just personnel, it's not just consumables, all lab equipment, all the environment, all of these factors come together. And that's why this module is so important for any embryologist to consider. So I wanted to just talk about the logbook as well. Some people were asking what a logbook is. The logbook is a a uh, log of you performing a particular number of procedures. Now, because we're doing this by distance learning, we can't check your competency. Uh, we can't check everything, but we um, certainly are going to make sure that you've done a number of these procedures. You need to identify somebody um, in your clinic or someone who can come to your clinic who can sign you off. It ideally is a senior embryologist or a laboratory director but if not, it might be the medical director. Um, if it's an embryologist who's a very senior, then they can see how competent you are at doing that procedure. Um, but we know that globally, that's not always the case. So the logbook is really looking at numbers, not competency. Um, it would be really difficult for us to do that uh, globally. So in the logbook for the uh, module four is about lab design and looking at VOC levels quality management and troubleshooting. And then with Dean's talk, he's going to go through the KPIs and take into account what you need to be monitoring yourself with uh, the key per performance indicators on a regular basis. So this is how the logbook works. The exit exam, we are going to look at videos of you doing different procedures. It will test a certain level of competency, but we can't certainly say that you're a highly competent embryologist. We just can say that you've learned the basics and you now have the tools to do the procedures. Um, but unfortunately, without coming face to face and checking competency, we couldn't acknowledge that. I wanted to always thank our global partners, uh, Upper, G Upper Egypt Assisted Reproduction Society, Sudanese Embryology Society, uh, EART in India, the Irish Clinical Embryologist, the Turkish Clinical Embryologist, and Overtrain Academy. And um, these are our other partners um, listed below. So that's the module four for the distance learning certificate in clinical embryology. Here's a summary of some of the free webinars we've done during the lockdown. I'm sure we're going to continue with this program, maybe not weekly, um, the sessions so far have taken about two hours, um, but we do have recordings of these and these will be at the relevant modules within um, the certificate. I want you to introduce you to our YouTube channel, the Embryology and PGD Academy. 
We have a number of videos there, including videos of the webinars. We have a Facebook page, the Embryology and PGD Academy. And I have two Facebook pages. My private one uh, is somewhere where I very rarely post anything about work. Um, but I do have a uh, Facebook page called Joyce Harper Work. And you can see this great picture here of some of the really key figures in PGT, which we took a few years ago at a conference in uh, the UK. And myself and Alpesh Doshi are on social media. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, Alpesh's uh, second um, handle there, at, uh, at a Doshi2, is his Instagram handle. The top ones are our uh, Twitter, and mine's the same on all. So thank you very much for listening. If you want to know more about the certificate, please visit the embryologycertificate.com. And we have a website for um, our workshops, the embryologympgdacademy.com, where you can find out when we're doing our next workshops. And again, the email for any inquiries, ivf.pgd.academy at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening and look forward to seeing you on one of our workshops. Thank you very much.